the worst game I've ever played. Here's why. I totally agree, chat. Seeing someone sh on something that I love is amazing. But I am very curious because Ryuku Sensei is someone whose opinion I actually trust quite a bit. I am curious what his issues are with the game because I definitely believe it's in the top three gotchas. Honkai Star Rail, Zema Zone Zero, Wuthering Waves, all f***ing goaded. But why does he think it is the worst game he's ever played? Let's see. Not anymore. I feel like I'm going insane hearing this all the damn time. Honkai Star Rail is amazing. Not like that Genshin. Penacony, more like Picacony. Am I right? No. Okay. I'll be real, I have heard all of this shit before. That being said, if bro defends Genshin, I'm going in. Because that game is ass. And I can explain to everybody why that shit's ass. Man, people are going peak at Coney. Penacony was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, I love Penacony. You know what's crazy though? I actually love Fontaine for Genshin Impact. But the problem is, it takes like 8,000 hours to get there. No. You're not right. In fact, you are absolutely wrong. Now, hear me when I say this, and I'm speaking to you. Yes, okay. you, specifically you. Okay. Honkai Star... Let me just get closer. Honkai Star Rail fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We are really getting into the thick of it, huh? Okay. And I can prove it with numbers. Yes, science. Now, let me explain. First of all, do I even play Honkai Star Rail? Yes, kinda. I mean, I log in, stare at Himiko, do my dailies, stare at Kafka, do the simulated universe each week, stare at Hanya, and have yep. slowly been building up my characters. I started back around mid-March after watching the 2.1 live stream about okay. all the new rewards after the anniversary. Hashtag Genshin could still never. And I wanted to quickly grind uh -huh. up through all the content from 1.0 all the way through to 2.1 to get Akron. Because I'm a disgusting little simp that wants her to step on my n I got Sparkle, sure. Dr. Ratio was in my inbox, as well as all the free polls. The introduction to the game was really fun and engaging. I enjoyed playing through the Hurt to Space Station and pretty much everything on Bellabog. Uh, Heard of Space Station was mid. Bellabog was f***ing amazing. I still think Bellabog was probably the best Honkai's ever been. Especially Kokolia. Oh. Huh? I thought you said Honkai Star Wars sucks. You're glazing it harder than a Krispy Kreme donut right now. When are you gonna- Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna get to that. Shut the f*** up. It had okay. good design, action, pacing. The story wasn't too simple, but still easy to follow. There was a good balance of puzzles, battles- Penacony was all really good. together well to make the storytelling experience really enjoyable with a fantastic soundtrack and an amazing finale with the Kokolia fight. And then we get to Jean Jean Lofu. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll be real. I think the only reason why people think that Penacony is better than uh, Bellabog was just because it starts with a P and people would call it Pikakoni. Nobody's going to call it Peekabog, right? That just sounds f***ing stupid. It's kind of like how everybody thought Zemla Zone Zero was going to be shit because it, its letters were ZZZ. Petticone is only getting praised because it's easy to praise. Petticone was still very good, but I still think Bellabog's the best. Uh, no one really likes that area. Just wait until you get to Peno. Yeah, Bellapog. <laughs> Jean Jean Lofu wasn't the worst. Definitely a step down from the massive high that we got after the end of Bellabog, but on the whole, I don't actually mind Jean Jean Lofu. It was an interesting world with a completely different vibe. The music was good, the puzzles were fun and interesting, and we got new lore. The thing that really dragged it down, in my opinion, was the unnecessary jargon for relatively simple concepts. I'm here to witness the divination of the Matrix of Prescience. You're here to read her mind and get some information out of her. I'm here to witness the divination of the Matrix of Prescience. Just speak fucking English, goddammit. But what? Bro is gonna hate every gacha game in general because they all do this artificial dialogue bloat, bro. They all do it. They all do the artificial dialogue bloat. Like I said, uh, putting aside the random jargon and exposition. I believe we are dealing with the so-called disciples of Sanctus Medicus. The Cienjo has the blessing of the Rainbow Arbiter and the Ambrosial Arbor's Delve. The Ambrosial Arbor was felled thousands of years ago. It wasn't the worst area I've ever been to. Oh no, that crown under- Dude, I'll be real. There are so many times where I'm sitting there reading the story for any gacha game, and they're using all of these terms for these things that I've never f***ing heard of. And my whole chat's like, oh, yeah, they said the thing. And I'm like, yeah, I know what that is, guys. Oh, yeah, the Ambrosial Arbor. Yeah, man. No, I, yeah, we all get it. Absolutely. I was paying attention. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I absolutely studied the lore of HSR before I played. Absolutely, it's the thing. And I have to go to Penacony. <coughs> okay, come here. Closer. A little more, a little closer, closer. Fuck Penacony. I have never had a worse gaming experience in my life. And I've been playing games since I could hold a controller. I can remember playing so- And this guy looks at least 70 years old, so that's a while. I the hedgehog on the original Sega Mega Drive back when I was about three or four years old. I didn't get far. 
I was a kid. I just like seeing the spinny ball go zoom. Anyway, my point is I've been playing the games for a long ass time and never in my 35 years on this planet have I raged at just how mind-numbingly boring Pinnacony is. And yes, I am including that Aranara quest from Genshin. Still not as bad as Pinnacony. Billabug was good. All right, we're okay. All right, all right. Okay, we're, we're reaching here. We're, we're reaching, bro. 14 hours of unvoiced dialogue where we talk to autistic plants. There's just no way that that's worse than Pentagoni. Okay, we're, we, we, lo we lost some aura with that one, man. We lost some aura. Good. John Joe Lofu wasn't bad, but then it just dives off a cliff with Pentagoni. The biggest problem with Pentagoni is that it's just not fun. Like, at all. You literally cannot do a single thing for the first hour and a half where you get to that one battle that takes about a minute to clear. And after that, you're right back to yapping for another 48 minutes with literally nothing to do but run around with Firefly doing real important stuff like roulette. Ice so I totally agree that Pentacony sucks you in and there is so much yapping. There is so much fucking yapping. However, I actually cared about the yapping for the story of Pentacony because the idea of the world was built up in the pre-existing planets. And I was so interested from the get-go, I was willing to kind of just sit there and enjoy it kind of like an anime. They also did, the, 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 the developers did a very good job of making me very interested in what happens in the story with the trailers that were released. But I understand not everybody there who was experiencing it in real time might not have enjoyed it. But uh, I actually really enjoyed it. As a firm anti-yapper enjoyer, I actually liked it quite a bit. Cream and double pinball, I guess. Oh, got another battle. That's another one minute of something, I guess, against a fucking trash can. Oh, no, mama. I actually timed how much turn-based action RPG oh, we got shit. in this turn-based action RPG game. So 2.0 takes about five and a half hours to complete, right? Keep in mind this is about the same amount of time it took for us to complete the entirety of Bellabog. And this is just the introduction to Pentacony. So yeah, five and a half hours, and of that you spend a grand total of nine minutes, 24 seconds actually doing that. I did the math. That is literally 2.85% of the time doing the thing you came to this game to do. Oh, so it's not good if you're not constantly fighting? Is that what you're trying to say? No, not at all. I don't need it to be 100% fighting all the time. That's Hell, insane. I don't even need it to be 50%. But less than 3% is not nearly enough. I didn't hate everything though. There's the interactive section with Firefly. That was all right. Took about 15 minutes though. Then there's a time that we're in the dreamscape. This is the only area in Pentacle that I actually enjoyed. This is what we were promised in the beginning with that whole scene with Akron. And when we were there, I immediately felt a major shift in tone and storytelling True that was insane. completely absent so far. Okay. Right, I'm guessing this is where the story gets good. At least I'm hoping. Too bad we were only there for about 45 minutes, max. Most of the time, you can't really do anything but go to the next dialogue location and sit around watching people yap. How much yap, you ask? Again, I timed it. 3 hours, 49 minutes, and 36 fucking agonizing seconds of yap. Out of 5 hours and 17 minutes of story, might I remind you. And at the end, the big twist, the big reveal, is that Robin is dead. Oh no. I know. Oh, you mean the girl that only had 3 minutes and 43 seconds of screen time this entire quest? That girl? We were supposed to care that she died? Her own song has a longer lifespan than she does. Seriously, why was I supposed to care? Then on to <laughs> part 1 when we continue on with Trailblazer's story. Right? Wrong. <laughs> oh, this quest. This fucking quest. Oh my god. It pissed me off so much I was about ready to punch through my desk. I thought 2.0 was bad, but I had absolutely no idea about the mind-numbing torture I was about to get myself through. Looking back on it, I would rather French kiss a Dementor than go through all this again. The quest is just less than six hours long, and four and a half hours of that is nothing but pure fucking yap. Shut up. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. There was a total of about 24 minutes worth of fighting. 13 it is crazy because I actually believe that what he's saying is the majority of people's opinions. Even me, there was so much fucking yapping. There really was. I do think Honkai Star Rail and pretty much all Hoyoverse games, Zelda Zone Zero actually does this the least. They do a lot of telling, not showing. And I do think showing, not telling is a lot better. Now, the important thing for Honkai Star Rail that he might not be aware of is that for when Pentacone was written, we were understanding that it was a shift in who was telling the story behind the scenes, and the writer for Honkai Star Rail changed, which gave a lot of players the sense of impending doom for who has the ability to die. I mean, I, I was very invested in the story because I was convinced that Himiko was going to die, and I thought that would have been very cool. However, that ended up not happening. But uh, they did a very good job with characters like Acheron, Adventuring, and Welt to really keep me invested in the day-to-day -day times of what is going on in Pentacony and this whole world that was so mystical and magical that um, I actually bought into it. Uh, yeah. 
You know, the characters that did die, I'll be real, I just did not give a fuck about them. What do you mean Adventuring got completely ruined? I thought Adventuring's story was great. And a half minutes of those weren't necessary to the story at all. 45 seconds were necessary to the story. And the last 11 minutes were the fight against Aventurine. You spent more time staring at static images listening to people talk about deep politics and very important theological stuff you have no idea about. What do you mean? It made sense. I followed it. Were you even paying attention to the story? Yes. Yes, I was, actually. I didn't skip a single line of dialogue. I was a good little boy and I took it all in. And all this stuff that went on about in Penacony made literally no fucking sense. For a new player, that is. Here's the thing. A lot of the stuff being talked about in Penacony, you have to play through the simulated universe several dozen times. You have to have gone through all the different encounters and read through all the dialogue trees there are to understand what was going on. Can I get some peace and quiet today? Holy shit. All this stuff about the hunt this, uh, harmony that, nihility, emanators, jippe, etc, etc. All of that was hardly even mentioned, let alone explained in the main story. Like, at all. And maybe I'm a little bit naive for thinking this, but I think if something is going to be talked about in the story, it should be properly introduced and explained in the story. Wild concept, I know. Also, another hot take here. But I thought the main story quest was supposed to, you know, follow the main character. The majority of 2.1 was from the perspective of someone that I could literally not give two flying fucks about. Aventurine. Oh my god. In 2.0, he was on stream for a total of like, say, 30 minutes. Most of the time, he was being a dick. And in 2.1, you spend most of the time in his point of view, following his story, talking about things that we don't know, doing things we don't care about, talking to NPCs we're going to forget about. Why was this in the main story quest? I will say, for every Hoyoverse game, if you're talking to an NPC, just skip it. Legit. It will make everything fucking better. And, you know, it shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't be that way. But the NPCs are just there to keep you logged in longer. abso fucking -lutely. I don't think Ryuku-sensei is maybe aware of that. I've been playing Hoyoverse games since the launch of them. Uh, and I've learned to adapt into their horrible pacing strategies and the way they deliver the story. Remember that everything Adventuring Story stood for was ruined after his arc because his banner ended. <laughs> yeah, I'll be real, bro. They should have killed Adventuring. They, they really should have. They really should have killed Adventuring. I literally could not have cared less about Adventuring when going through this, and I was slowly hating him more and more the longer I was forced to play as this golden-haired fuckboy with freshly shaved testicles on his chest. Well, it's supposed to set up his motivations for the final battle, and, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, and character story quests exist exactly for this reason. What they should have done is saved all of that for a quest that we have to do after we, Trailblazer, go through our own story. Go through that, make Aventurine seem like the villain, have the big fight with Aventurine, yada yada yada. Then we have a character story quest unlocked where we flash back to go through all of Aventurine's stuff. That would recontextualize how we see him as a character and put everything in a new light. If I 1 million percent agree. I 1 billion percent agree. That would have been far more interesting for the character story quest to shine a new light on the perspective that we were given. It did, That quest did feel like the Aventurine uh, character quest. Uh, no, I think that's amazing. Because then it just kind of made the main characters just look like fucking idiots. I think this is actually so smart. If you're familiar with Harry Potter, you'll understand what I mean. We go through that story thinking Snape is a bad guy out to get Harry. It's yep. not until far into the later books that we get his backstory and it completely changes how we see him as a character and his actions in the story so far. If we had known that backstory before all of this, it would have ruined many narratives and plot twists. Now back to Hongai's yep. Daryl. So putting aside all the Aventurine stuff, we spend about two and a half hours as Trailblazer. And what we were doing? going from one location to another to stand around talking. Most of the dialogue is basically recapping what we just went through in 2.0. That is until the bar sequence. Uh, quick question. What was the fucking point of that bar sequence? Did I miss something? Like, should It's a great question. I skipped it. I immediately acknowledged this bar sequence means nothing. I skipped all of it. Ban is hot and old, don't get me wrong. But on the whole, the entire thing had nothing to do with the story at large, right? Seriously, what was the point? Just to set up that drink mixing minigame? Okay, why is it in the main story quest though? It makes no sense at all. Agreed. Oh, listen, I get that you want to make this game a more cinematic experience. Cool, I like movies. But to do that, you've got to learn a thing or two about, you know, cinema. Having people stand around talking for several Good minutes farm. at a time with no changes in angle, character focus, zero character movement, or anything like that is just not interesting at all. And that's when they're trying. Like I mentioned before, there were way too many static... It's crazy, though, because in Zenless Zone Zero, they do a really good job of changing the angle and keeping things fresh. I agree. Seeing four NPCs just fucking T-pose out and yap, it is pretty fucking brutal, guys. I ain't go cap. Shots or just straight up black screens in this patch. And here's the golden rule for cinematic storytelling, Hoyoverse. Show, don't tell. Show, don't tell. 
In fact, there were a total of 35 minutes and 54 seconds of scenes with static images, whereas a grand total of 24 minutes, 7 seconds actually in battle. At this point, Honkai Sterile is the equivalent of Love and Deep Space, a visual novel with minor gameplay aspects. Oh. Which is fine for lads because that's what they marketed themselves as. Can't say the same with Honkai Star Rail though. And this tell don't show style storytelling, using that word very loosely, continued into 2.2 as well. I think you can tell what I'm going to say about this patch too. Too much yap, not enough gameplay at all. Not a single battle for three whole hours. And that one only lasted a couple of minutes too. I, I will admit, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can all acknowledge this, okay? Three hours of that shit is fucking crazy, guys. That's a Lord of the Ring style movie. Now, I want you to imagine... Frodo, Sam, and Aragorn all sitting in a bar talking for three straight hours. Guys, I don't think it would have been considered the greatest trilogy of all time if that's how they told the story. It is pretty fucking pain, bro. I ain't go cap. In fact, there was one whole 15 minute section of nothing but black screens and two static images. 15 fucking minutes. 3.x will be the same another right of HI third. 3.x Trailblaze mentioned Emphoria stories will be guided by Fan Chuan, aka Greenland Sailboat. Fan Chuan, Greenland Sailboat is one of the writers from Honkai and Back Third. Well, we're gonna hope that Bro does not like yapping too much. Jesus Christ. Imagine watching an episode of your favorite anime and it was just literally one or two pictures for the entire runtime. Yeah. But at this point, I knew what I was kind of getting myself into. So let's just take it for what it is. Maybe I'll enjoy it more that way. Nope. But it's not as bad as Genshin. At least you don't have to listen to Paimon. Who needs Paimon? They do the exact same thing in Hawkeye Star Rail 2. Repetitious, redundant dialogue talking about things we just did or things we... March 7th is quite literally Paimon. But she's not Paimon and that's a huge W. We don't care about. Because it's not like ear-shattering retardation. You know? It's like kind of soothing mental retardation. Sure. Maybe it's not as annoying as Paimon's high-pitched screeching. <laughs> But why is Sunday telling us about how Robin got shot in the neck? Again, too much tell, not enough show. Why aren't we seeing it? Now, I don't mean to go the full PG-13 route or anything like that. I mean, think of the children. But they could have done it in a way where we take control of Robin for a short period of time, where we see her helping the civilians. We see the war-torn location, the desolation, the despair, the tragedy, and Robin trying to be the shining ray of light, the song of hope for the people. We see her going around, helping people, and see hope return to their faces because of her. Then at the end, we can get a scene in the evening. The sun is setting, Robin's in the distance, backlit beautifully, leaving only a black silhouette. Then we hear a gunshot, and we see her fall to the ground. Be great. Black. Cinema. Pure fucking cinema. We could have done all of that in about a 20 or 30 minute sequence. Reuse acid from Bellabog or something. It's not that hard. But no, we get Sunday yapping about it for several minutes, speaking in such a monotone drawl that it almost fell asleep. Now you understand why she always- Dude, the Sunday shit was actually pain. You know what's crazy? This video is actually starting to get me to remember how many painful moments there were. There really were a lot of pain in this shit. There really was. It actually is crazy. Wear such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? This was supposed to be his biggest motivating factor. This is why he was drawn to order. Disorderly he noise! He about the whole entire thing? His entire story is about him wanting to protect his sister, to keep her in a cage for her own protection, and she wants to be free despite the danger that might come to her. I'll give this to 2.2 though. It did start to explore interesting philosophical concepts with this plotline. They kept bringing up the question of the, is it better to be in a cage completely protected from harm or is it better to be free even though you may get hurt? The yep. whole thing between Robin and Sunday is that their relationship is much like the bird in the cage flashback that was yep. just brought up and it was generally interesting. Well, it was the first time we heard it, but the amount of times they're bringing up and not do anything- It was, it was a lot. The very end, it, it really was, I it was a lot. Notice this either. Even now there are people making it, hey, dove memes. Bro's people not wrong. Other the things like how nobody seems to speak like a regular human being. Still unwilling to reveal your true identity? It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. <laughs> not to mention that a lot of the dialogue sounds like it's written by an edgy 13-year-old trying to be deep. Why does life slumber? You're fucking kidding me with that line, are you? What the fuck does that even mean? People think that's deep. Yeah, okay, whatever. And other issues that aren't really Honkai style. I do wonder how much better the story would be if the human beings just talked like human fucking beings. Like, not everybody has to talk like a theater kid. You know what I'm saying? Now, the thing, the reason why I still enjoyed Pentacony is because I really bought into the characters. And, like, when I see my favorite character on the screen, I'm like, oh, okay, great. Hey, 
Tell me sweet lies, well. Or specific, like the uh, single choice dialogue options or the illusion of choice where you have like several options, but they all say practically the same thing and leads to no changes at all in the dialogue tree. Like, what is the point? But at this point, I think I'd be kicking a dead horse. On the whole, I think the gameplay and story in Honkai Star Rail is good. What do you mean it's good? You've just been ranting about it this whole time. Now, listen to what I'm saying. The gameplay is good. The story is good. The storytelling is absolute horseshit. It doesn't matter if you think Honkai Star Rail's gameplay is the best that gacha games can be. It doesn't matter if the story is the best thing out there either. Now, hear me out. You can have the most delicious kernel of corn in the world. This corn True. tastes so good it can change your life and you'll never taste anything better than it in the entire world for the rest of your life. But if that kernel of corn is encased in a giant dog turd, I don't care how good it tastes, I'm not fucking eating that shit. Sure, the corn might be good, but getting there was an absolute nightmare and I have the aftertaste of dog shit in my mouth. No thanks, I'm good. I've been meaning to play through 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, and 2.6, but I just physically cannot get myself in the mindset of... The problem is, is that this is almost every single gacha game. And it sucks because I, I think Wuthering Waves has the best storytelling, but also the story that they're telling isn't really that crazy. But they tell a not crazy story, at least in a fun and interactive, pretty quick way. But I do think the story that Honkai Star was attempting to tell is the best, but the way that they tell it really isn't that great. That's fair. I'm about to put myself through torture right now. I ha I'm, I'm, I'm about to put myself through torture. Th this is going to hurt. This is going to be painful. I, I, am, I, am, I, am going to, I am going to kill myself. Yep. All right, great. Here we go. But why do I feel like this and the rest of the gacha community still raves about how good Honkai Star is? Best storytelling? Are you fucking kidding me? This is what I think it is. The people who think Honkai Star Rail is good are those who jumped on Honkai Star Rail from day one. They I think it's because people can't differentiate story from the way that the story's told. They've been playing it every day, piecemeal, and they haven't noticed the gradual decrease in quality. Like I think a, a good way to understand this is, is try to get someone to one for one a comedy special from someone like Kevin Hart, and they'll realize the delivery is everything in what they're saying. Right? So it, it's, that's the big difference between story and storytelling is it does matter who's telling that story. Like a frog in boiling water. If a frog is putting boiling water, it will immediately jump out. But if the frog is in cold water and you slowly increase the temperature, it won't notice the danger and it will be cooked to death. You're cooked. You are quite literally cooked right now. And well, actually, modern scientists say that due to the thermal regulation, the frogs will still jump out. So you're actually wrong. George! Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Shut the... Thank you, George. Even though I enjoy story-focused turn-based action RPGs, and I do, my favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy VIII, followed closely by Final Fantasy X, I just can't bring myself to drudge through dog shit storytelling like in Honkai Star Rail anymore. Even if I like the gameplay, as basic as it is, it's not worth it if it's only 5% of the game as a whole. No, wait, sorry, 3%. Almost gave it too much credit there. That Fun is insane. Scarce gameplay, interesting core story ruined by terrible writing. Seriously, does anybody talk like a regular human? Just, just one. I just need one person, please. Atrocious exposition, repetition, jargon, and a lot left unexplained leaving players feeling unsatisfied. This is what 90% of Honkai Star Rail is right now. And even if the rest of the 10% is all good, all great even, 90% is still the vast majority. And that's why I say, as a whole, Honkai Star Rail fucking sucks ass. <laughs> hey guys, just something I want to say to- <laughs> Dude, I love this video. I know to a lot of people, people hearing different opinions, it makes them very upset. To me, I think it's so fucking funny. For real. I think, I think it is so fucking funny. To everyone out there, uh, if you like Honkai Star Rail, just keep in mind that this is not a personal attack on you for liking that game. I'm, I'm not. I also hate how he has to say it like this because anybody who gets personally offended by bro just merely talking about his opinion on a video game uh, is fucking insane to me. I would have cut this out. This is bad storytelling. Ryuku, this is bad storytelling, man. You are doing the exact thing that you hate. I'm not gonna say like you're anything that like you're stupid for liking it. Uh, if you do like it, then I'm genuinely happy for you. Uh, but these are the reasons why, personally, I don't like this game and I just needed to get them off my chest for everyone to hear, because... I mean, I do agree. I think Honkai Star Wars should have a skip button 100%. I absolutely do believe that. I absolutely do. Now, for me, I've gotten payoff for everything that I have wanted to happen in the game so far. Now, as long as there is a good redemption story for Sunday and Pentacone, because this is the nice little bow where Pentacone needs to tie everything up. I'll be real, I skipped the Rappa quest entirely. The thing with Honkai Star Wars is whenever I'm interested in the story and I do the story because I want to, 
I've always left with a great impression. I really have. Now, the great news is that Honkai Star for me, I, it's very easy for me to tell when I'm going to enjoy something versus when I'm not going to enjoy something. Rappa was ass and cringe, and yeah, that's why I skipped it. I can usually tell when the story's going to be good or not. And so I'm like, oh, okay, this is the good one. All right, I'll do that one. That one's bad. Okay, I'll skip it. Very often not, not, I, I hear people say that they like Honkai Star I say, I don't, and they say, why? And whenever that came, that comes up now, I can just point to this video and say, just just watch this and you'll understand why. Yep. As I mentioned before, there's a lot to like about Honkai Stereo. Like the, the game design, uh, the character design, the music is amazing. Uh, some of the uh, the, f the fanatic cutscenes and all of a sudden, I really enjoy all of those. But when it comes to actual core gameplay itself, in comparison to how much of it we actually get in this game, I don't think it measures up. And the further we go along in Honkai Stereo, the further I feel like Hoyo just doesn't really want us to play this game like at all. Like. With the whole um, auto battling system, it's very useful. It's very uh, convenient as well. So don't get me wrong on that. But like with the amount of, or should I say, the lack of combat or the lack of gameplay in the actual story itself, combined with more recent characters such as Akron um, using her skill to instantly get rid of the other mobs as well, it just feels like more and more they're just giving us more reasons not to do the thing that we came to this game to do in the first place. Does that make sense? And I'm sure I'm going to hear some people say, well, just don't use Akron then. Well, that's, first of all, that's completely missing the point. Second of all, you realize that when you say that, when you're talking... It is crazy. People tell me that Akron is power corrupt as fuck, but uh, she still feels completely broken to me. I don't know why people are saying that. Like that. That you sound like the people that are defending Genshin that See, are saying, uh, oh, well, just don't use Hyper Bloom then. Like, why would I not use what I have in my arsenal? Yeah, That's for sure. That's the thing I'm, I'm hearing quite often. All the things I hear people say that they hate about Genshin, they defend vehemently in Honkai Star. I just don't understand why. I don't understand why they give Honkai Star a pass when they absolutely rag on Genshin for it. They're both. So. I think the reason why people do that is because Honkai Star Rail has a cohesive world that you can buy into, and there's not really any Mickey Mouse complete immersion shattering characters. I actually think that if Genshin Impact were to just remove Paimon, it would make the world feel a lot more believable. But I can't believe, because and she's on the screen 24-7, at least when March 7th's autistic ass comes in. It's for little bits and pieces. And it's like, oh, okay, it's the dumb blonde. But the world is being told through Boots the Monkey from Dora the Explorer. And me as a 30-year-old man, I cannot buy into the game being told through a three-year-old toddler's perspective. I just simply cannot do it. Both just as bad in my opinion. I know this video is going to get downloaded <coughs> to hell. But no, you're fine. That's fine. I, I, I know that's just what it's going to be. I I'll take uh, Duke Sensei in this case, I guess. Because I bet most of the people won't really watch past the first 30 seconds. They'll just leave a, a, a down vote, a negative comment, and just go on with their life. And again, that's just the nature of things. Another thing I know that's going to happen is I'm going to get people in the comments saying, uh, you only dislike it because you're a, you're a Kuro shill for Wuthering Waves. And that's just not the case. I made uh, my first video about Honkai Star Rail way back in March, if I remember correctly, in March or April, uh, way before Wuthering Waves came out. And I've always had these opinions about um, uh, Honkai Star Rail. So it really isn't a case of me wanting to shill for any particular game or company over another one. It's just the way I feel about this. And in fact, I actually have another video. I think it was a great right video. Now, um, kind of being really quite and critical I understand about what his Maybe not as hard as this entirely. video here, but And I'm glad he included so, the stats. I don't know. Uh, take that for what it's worth. But to all you out there that actually watch this video to the end, and that just being know said, that I still greatly, greatly enjoy you, Honkai Star Rail's story. Even if you disagree with me on a lot Honkai of it, not Star all of it. It's just different things for different people, you know. And while I'm recording this, uh, the the latest live stream hasn't. But I mean, you would be trolling if you've never caught me saying, "Man, there's a lot of yapping," because there is a lot of fucking yapping. That's kind of the exhausting thing for like, we're going to a new world in 3.0 and the amount of yapping drivel that we're going to have to consume explaining the lore of the world rather than being shown it is going to be completely fucking mind numbing. Like it, it really is. The more complex the world is, the more complex the lore explanation is going to have to be, which means the more fucking mind numbing drivel yapping that we're going to have to experience. Right. And right now we're going to a world made by gods. It's going to be hard been announced yet so i have no idea what the new stuff is going to be like um but honestly i don't really think it matters to me at all like bellabog was very simple there's poor people and then there's rich people we're trying to bridge the gap pony cody was all right so there's the alive world and then there's the the not alive world and if you die in the alive world you live in the dead world but if you die in the dead world then you're actually alive in the alive world well sometimes but not always 
And then there's this character called Firefly that exists, kind of, and she's a robot. Well, she's not a robot. She's just in a robot suit. And then, you know, there's, there's okay, there's Adventuring and he's the bad guy. Well, he's not actually the bad guy. He's, like, more, like, misunderstood. Like, it's just, like, give us a clear bad guy. We go kill the bad guy. There it is. Bellabog. Poor people, rich people. Kakoli is bad. Killer. Boom. Bada thing, bada boom. Get it done. I'm going to say it again. Um, if you liked Penacone, if you like Honkai Star Rail, all the, all the best to you. I honestly don't really care. It's fine. Like I said, I'm not going to say you're stupid for liking Honkai Star Rail. Everyone likes different things. And these are just the reasons why it doesn't suit my particular taste. It's nothing to do with me not liking story. I do. It's not me like not liking turn-based um, action RPGs. I do. It's just I don't feel like this game respects my time as a player. If they cut out all of the fat and all the redundancy... Uh, I don't know about that. I feel like you just press the skip button and you're fine. I think Hawkeye Star Rail actually res uh, respects, respects the player's time quite a bit. Uh, you just gotta skip the shit you don't like, right? It's, it's, it's like, I judge a game by how much it respects my time, by how much the daily login takes. And I think Hawkeye Star Rail takes maybe like five to six minutes every day. It's really not that hard. Seeing all this... What skip button? Okay, sorry. The spam left and right click button. That one absolute yap and bloat i think i'd really enjoy it but it doesn't well not yet anyway i haven't even done like a 2.6 and i'm already hearing like all the banana memes so whatever yeah i don't really know what to say about this and by the time i edit this video i think it's actually going to come out after that live stream as well um so i'm going to be dealing with all that so everyone's going to be coming off that high for the latest live stream and they're going to see this video and just absolutely rip into it and yep that's fine it is what it is. No, that was As fine. For me, I'm just gonna log in, do my dailies, get my jades, uh, pull Fugue, because she's literally the only character I'm really... I don't really think there's anything in this video that he said that was wrong. It's just his perspective. And I'm glad he included the numbers. ...hanging about for at the moment, and then I'm just gonna piece the fuck out. I play seven gacha games every day. One That's of those games retarded. I play two different counts on, and there are many other games coming out in the future, such as, uh, say, like, Duet, Duet Night Abyss, uh, Nevenus to Evanus, Project Mugen, That's too much. Zero Familia, all, all these other games, uh, Arknights Enfield as well as another one, all these games coming out, and like, that I is just way will too not much. have the time nor energy to go through all those, and so I'm going to have to, like, get rid of or, like, stop playing some of the games I'm currently playing, and Honkai Star Rail is at the top of my list uh, for the reasons I stated in this video. Anyway, yeah, guys... Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, or dislike. Uh, leave a hate thread and unsubscribe if you want to. Again, no hard feelings. I'll see you in the next one if you ever want to come back to this channel. But for those of you that do want to stick around, then I will see you in the next video. Peace. Great fucking video, man. I thought it was fucking fantastic. People might not be able to handle a different person's opinion, but uh, I thought it was really fucking good. I do 1 million percent agree that if Honkai Star were to use more dynamic camera angles, and if they were to use uh, more telling with cutscenes rather than just, or more showing with cutscenes rather than just telling with static dialogue, I think the game would be better. And I think if you disagree with that, you are heavily, heavily biased. And uh, you just kind of don't know how the proper game structure should be told. But that's just my opinion. Great fucking video, dude.